wherever he is, um, back to be a thorn in your side for climate action. The last time the last time that I was here was about five years ago. It was as a young teenager begging for common sense action on protecting our environment. And here we are, five years and a pandemic later, and I'm not a teenager anymore, and the planet is a bit warmer still. My name is Jamie Sarai Margolin, and I'm young, but I'm old enough that my age doesn't matter anymore. I used to say it at the beginning of every speech, but the cuteness factor has worn off, and honestly, I'm fed up with how the youth thing has become overemphasized when there are people of all ages being impacted and dying from the climate crisis all over the world. The Youth Will Fix It becomes a way for leaders to offset their own responsibility onto students who, while it's amazing that you're organizing, and I admire the work you do, I was you, I am you, um, this is the job of the leaders to take common sense climate action. They shouldn't be offsetting it on the children and the more we get too caught up with, oh, the inspirational youth, the inspirational youth, look how inspiring, look at these child stars, wow, look at these youth, the more it becomes a way for them to deny their own responsibility. It becomes a way for leaders and corporations to inspirationally greenwash and package sustainability as some inspi something inspiring with some pretty young faces without actually changing the systems worsening the climate crisis. Emissions are still going up. The fossil fuel industry is cashing in big time. They are making record profits right now, by the way, and we're running out of time. Hope is important, but hope without tangible, scientific, accurate action is just delusion. And I am sick of the delusion, greenwashing, and sanitation and marketing that has taken over the mainstream climate conversation. As climate change becomes more and more common mainstream knowledge, everyone who is a part of the problem learns all the right phrases to say, they learn all the right hashtags to use, the right green imagery to use, and boom, Climate action and sustainability lose their meaning and they're packaged and repackaged to sell as many products as possible while the world burns. Our demands become toothless, watered-down slogans. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer is the game that every corporation and government who wants to nullify the movement plays. If you play nice, say the right things, invite people to the table, make them feel special, stage some nice photo ops, you can nullify the people who are supposedly the climate movement so they don't actually challenge you when it comes to your extraction. This is a strategy that politicians and corporations are using all over the world to nullify the movement. And we are not going to delude ourselves out of climate disaster. There is no positive thinking our way out of this. We need to meet reality on reality's terms. And yes, youth empowerment is important, but I do think there is a thing as taking it too far, of overemphasizing age to the point that all we get is child stars at the end of the world instead of real policy change. So speaking of real policy change, let's talk about why we're here. Governor Inslee and the government of Washington, well, we have beef. We have a history. We go a long way back. See, I lived in the Pacific Northwest from when I was two to when I was 18, and I come back to visit every year to visit my family, to visit the Salish Sea, the rivers, the salmon, the Pacific Northwest. I've never seen an orca, but to visit them in spirit. It's a huge part of me. In 2018, I joined Our Children's Trust, a legal group that helps young people sue their governments for worsening the climate crisis, and a lawsuit suing Governor Inslee in the state of Washington. And I say climate worsening because inaction is not what's happening here. Inaction would be much better than where we are now. Where we are now is actively pouring gasoline on the fire and heating the planet as much as physically possible. The case of the Washington youth ended up being fought to the nail against the government that were supposedly pro-climate action. And while we were suing for climate recovery plan to be implemented in Washington state, we lost. But that doesn't mean the fight stops. For all my cynicism from my years in the movement since I was 14, the way that youth has become overemphasized and all of that, I am still very happy to see the next generation of high school organizers, the next generation of college organizers, organizing for your planet, putting on this amazing event. Thank you so much for all of the work you do. Um, I'm happy that you guys are the next generation of people being a thorn in Olympia's side for the protection of our environment. Perhaps you'll be more successful than I was. Today, we march for the wild salmon. The energy from the Snake River dams must be replaced 
by other forms of renewable energy, and the dams must be breached to save the salmon from extinction. For the original peoples of this land, salmon represents tradition, culture, income, and fishing communities all over the Northwest rely on this salmon. Dam breaching is essential to saving Snake River salmon and the critically endangered southern resident orcas. We are advocating for the state legislature to fully fund Governor Inslee's LSRD energy study and LSRD transportation study budget requests. For the salmon, for the orca, for all the people and the creatures that rely on them, we fight for action. While we are realistic, we also maintain hope and we do not give up because that also is important, but our hope comes in action. Muchas gracias todos, thank you so much. It's great to be back here and thank you to all of the organizers, to the next generation of organizers in the state making this possible. You guys are amazing and I appreciate you having me here. Muchas gracias. <laughs>